Hello everyone and welcome to Uncivil Law and for today's case we have a corporation that was required to pay taxes even though they don't want to. So a lot of people think that corporations don't pay the taxes that they are owed and one corporation didn't want to pay a particular tax and the government's like no you do actually owe us tax so it is a nice outcome in that a corporation is being held liable for the taxes that they are owed. This is the case of the commissioner of the Internal Revenue Service versus Broker Tech Holdings. In this case, New Jersey gave Broker Tech a huge pile of money. The question is, does the huge pile of money count as income that the corporation has to pay taxes on? So let's read this and figure that out. Let's get started. The relevant facts as found by the tax court following a bench trial are undisputed. In 1996, the state of New Jersey created the Business Employment Incentive Program, the Incentive Program, to grow New Jersey's economy and revitalize its cities through providing financial assistance to businesses, specifically cash grants for companies willing to re relocate or expand in New Jersey. So the, the great state of New Jersey feels like maybe people don't want to operate businesses in New Jersey. And so they thought, how about cash bribes? What if we just bribe people to come to New Jersey? Maybe that would work. Now, New Jersey could, you know, make its state more attractive by, you know, not being such a dank place to live. But New Jersey's like, that's too much effort. What if we just give you money? So New Jersey tried the let's give them money approach. And then the question is, does the business have to pay income tax on that money? So let's read on. A company receiving the grants would be required to maintain a minimum number of employees and remain at the new location for a certain time period. But, and here's the critical part, no restrictions were placed on how the company could use the money. So it really was just a big pile of money. It wasn't money even for a particular purpose. New Jersey just said, we will, we will get you to our state, not by making our state more attractive, but we'll just give you money. How about money? Do you like money? And so, but the money can be used for literally anything, all the things, including like just putting it into your pocket. That would have also been an option, but New Jersey thought cash bribes were the way to go. All right. Fair enough. I guess let's read on the grant recipients at issue here are two subsidiaries of the organization broker tech. The offices were destroyed as part of the September 11th attack. So they're looking for new homes, their offices having previously been destroyed due to, due to certain events in New York. So Broker Tech certified it would employ a combined 720 full-time workers at its relocated office spaces in New Jersey. It also noted that it would make $47 million of an improvements to the office spaces was leasing, as well as acquire $25 million worth of technology, furniture, and other equipment. So it's like, yeah, we're willing to invest in New Jersey because we literally don't have a choice because our offices in New York no longer exist. But it was not required under the terms of this program to make those expenditures to receive the grants. So BrokerTech said, we're planning on doing this, but it's not a condition of it. They just, it's a, it's an interesting thing to note. So it's not like we have to do this in order to get the grant money. We're just going to give you the grant money for existing. But Broker Tech is saying this is something we plan on spending it on. The only thing that was required was that it create a minimum number of jobs and hence a minimum amount of income tax revenue for the state. So I, I suppose the next logical question is how do we get the, the workers in New Jersey because we have to get people to live in the state. But I guess maybe if you build it, they will come as the working theory here for New Jersey. So if we build the broker tech, the citizens will come and then we can charge the citizens tax, but we are going to give the company a tax break to open business in our state because they don't want to open it in our state because our state kind of blows. But if we give them money, maybe they will. All right, let's give that a shot. Garbin's grants would amount to 80% of its employees' tax tight income tax withholding, and brokers would amount to 70% as it created further jobs. So the 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 this is just a nice little thing. So basically, basically the business is very much exploiting its own workers for its gain, even more so than normal. So just to make sure that you understand what's going on here, right? The, the state of New Jersey charges a state income tax, as many states do. 
you know, not my state of Texas, they don't charge an income tax, but New Jersey is one of the states that does charge an income tax, all right? So we are going to charge you a percentage of your income for the privilege of living in our state of New Jersey. Great. And then it said to the company, how about we give you 80% of that money and we just give it to you? So 80% of the money we're going to tax your workers. We're just going to give right back to you. So we're exploiting your workers who we're going to tax, but we're not going to use that money to like build roads or build schools or make New Jersey better in any way. We're not going to use the money for public purposes. What if instead of that, what if we just chart, we tax your workers and then we just give the money right back to the businesses. So we're, ex we're even more exploiting the workers because we're using their money, not for the purposes of improving our great state, but for the purposes of lining the topics of this brokerage. Uh, okay, that's uh, all right. That's that's great. Good news. The state began to make these grant payments, which you know is just recycled income tax. In 2004, after BrokerTech started to pay its employees, and then some of that money was taxed away, and then they got it back. So yeah, over the next decade, Garbin received $147 million and first brokers received $22 million for a total of $170 million, which was earned directly off the backs of their own workers. So that's $170 million that didn't go to building roads or building bridges or building schools or any of that stupid stuff. No, that's $170 of tax revenue, not for public purposes like that, but rather for the much more important purpose of padding the company's bottom line so that they will move to New Jersey in the first place. 80%, you know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not even necessarily offended by the fact that they gave them a fraction of it. I'm offended by the, the, the amount of the fraction. Like if it had been 10% or even 20%, like that'd be one thing, right? So we'll get, okay, we'll use 20% of the revenue as a bribe. But how big a bribe do we need to in order to move to New Jersey? How big a bribe do we need? 80%. That's how big a bribe we need. So I'm offended by the number because the number is reflective of how bad the situation is because it's reflective of how big a bribe do we need. It's not like we needed just a 5% or 10% or 20% leverage in order to, to incentivize you to move to New Jersey. No, no, no. 5, 10, 20% was not going to do. The only way that we could convince you to live in New Jersey or, or to build businesses in New Jersey was an 80% kickback. I, I, think, I think New Jersey is openly admitting that they're not a very good state because the only way we can get people to live here is an 80% kickback. And we could use that 80%, you know, to, again, improve the state of New Jersey so people would want to live here. But no, how about we just give it to the company and pad the bottom line? Good. During the four tax years at issue here from 2010 to 2013, broker tax tax returns excluded approximately $56 million of this money as non-taxable, non-shareholder contributions to capital under the relevant law. So... The, the companies, having gotten their kickback, would also like to not be taxed by the U.S. government on its tax, on its kickback. So of the money they got, $56 million they're trying to exclude. The Commissioner of the Internal Revenue concluded that the grants were taxable income, and accordingly, it issued a deficient notice. So, so having received this kickback of the big pile of money, of 100 whatever million dollars it was, 56 million of it they are trying to exclude as non-taxable because they're capital improvements, improvements to, to the building and stuff like that, which is not taxable. And so, yeah, they're like, how about we don't get taxed on that money by the U.S. government? And the Internal Revenue Service said, no, we'd like, we'd like taxes on our $56 million, please, because it was income. So the question that we have to solve right now is the we can put aside the morality of all this we can put aside the issue of what it says about the great state of new jersey and how great they consider themselves that we need an 80 percent kickback in order to leverage people to work here but you know let's put all that aside and just try to figure out whether or not 56 million million dollars of this is income or it's something else so what is it is it income or something else let's read on 
The tax court held a bench trial, after which it heard from witnesses, including staff, and considering the stipulations. Following the trial, the court issued an opinion agreeing with BrokerTech that the grants were capital contributions and therefore excluded. So the, the IRS said, this is taxable. The tax court said, no, it's not. So now we're on appeal on the issue of it's taxable or not. The incentive programs grants to BrokerTech as an inducement for its relocation that they fall within these regulations. The regulations provides an example of contribution to capital. The value of land or other property contributed to a corporation by a governmental unit or by a civic group for the purpose of inducing a corporation to locate its business in a particular community. So, so income is taxable, but things that do not include income are property or other assets that are given for the purposes of locating its business in a particular place, which this seems like it might fall within those corners. So they say, ah, this isn't taxable because it is property contributed in order to induce us to do business here. We didn't want to do business in New Jersey. The only reason we're doing it is because of the 80% kickbacks. So the argument from the brokerage is they fall within these guidelines. All right, let's read on. The Internal Revenue Code sets up a broad definition of income, providing that, except we're excluded, it means all income from whatever source derived. So income is any income. Income means income. So yeah, it is a bit circular, but yeah. In light of this broad definition, the Supreme Court has held exclusions from income must be narrowly construed. So it's income unless it specifically says it's not. The exclusion that's at issue here provides that a relevant time when a taxpayer is a corporation, Gross income does not include any contribution to the capital of the corporation. The Treasury regulation interpreting makes clear includes not only contributions from shareholders, but others including governmental corporations. So income does not include capital contributions. And when you think about capital contributions, you're thinking about the, the, physical, the physical property, physical building. The, 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 that's what you think of when you think about a capital improvement. About this much, the parties do agree. They disagree, however, as to what circumstances indicate an intent to make contribution as capital. So is this a capital improvement or is it just income? As noted above, the tax court concluded that New Jersey's incentive program falls squarely within the four corners of the regulation because the grants were made to induce them to relocate there. So according to the way the regulation is written, that this does seem to fall within the the sense of capital improvement because the way the regulation is written, it was for the purposes of inducing us to move there. We didn't want to live in New Jersey because it was New Jersey. It was only from the massive kickbacks we even considered it. And we're still kind of regretting it. So we want all the money. Yeah. The United States Supreme Court has set out two characteristics that define a non-shareholder contribution to capital. The contribution certainly must become a permanent part of the working capital structure. And it may not be compensation, such as direct payment for specific quantifiable services. So it must be a permanent part of structure, which again looks to buildings and other sort of physical assets is the kind of thing that qualifies as capital. The commissioner maintains the incentive program grant fails both these tests. As the first test, the payments were unstructured and could be used for any purpose. While they could be used to acquire a capital asset, they could be used to pay other assets like wages or dividends or just, you know, padding our bottom line or just giving our, our company leadership golden parachutes or any of that stuff. Moreover, the amount of grants was not calculated based on the amount of capital investments they agreed to make. They're based on the amount of wages. So it wasn't money given for the express purpose of building things. So it wasn't it wasn't land. It wasn't building. It wasn't money for the purpose of purchasing land. It wasn't money for the purchase of purpose of building buildings or for physical equipment or other sort of physical assets that would think the kind of things that are depreciable, the kind of things that, you know, are physical and wear out over time. So it was none of these things. It wasn't that, and it wasn't even that they were giving it to you on the basis of how much stuff you were doing in terms of the, all that because it was only connected to the amount of employees. So we don't know where you intend on these employees working. I, I don't know, maybe an open field or something. I don't know. But the, the government of New Jersey wasn't saying, well, if you have this much office space or you have this big of whatever, that's where we'll give you money. No, it was just, it was just do you want to operate here and will you employ people that we can tax 
so that we can give you 80% of a kickback. So it wasn't tied to the capital. So that makes it non-capital improvement. Land is not depreciable. That's probably true. Yeah, the 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 analogy did break down at some point, Mandy Amos. Yeah, land typically does not lose its value like that. That's that's fair. Yeah, unless unless well, I mean, land is land might be depre again. Is land is land depreciable? Yeah, I guess the land is depreciable to the extent that you're extracting things from the land. So land might be depreciable to the extent that you are extracting natural resources from it. So I think I think land is depreciable if you're uh, extracting extracting things from the land. I think it might be depreciable, but I'm not an expert on the tax code because I took exactly one day of tax class, one day of tax class, and I noped out of that real hard and then signed up for something else. I was like, no, this isn't for me. Read together, the relevant case law suggests an unrestricted government payments to a company reveal an intent to provide additional income rather than contribute to capital. So it was an intent just to give you money, not to build stuff. Calculating payments based on income rather than the amount of capital investment made by the company further indicates an intent to provide income rather than contribution to capital. In sum, from the cases that we have distilled, it supports the consumer commissioner's petition position that unrestricted cash grants calculated on the basis of wages are not contributions to capital, but rather supplements to the company's income. When viewed in the light of the law as set out above, the record here permits only one resolution. New Jersey's incentive program grants to broker tech were intended as supplement to its income rather than as contribution to capital. It's undisputed that New Jersey placed no restriction on how the incentive program grants could be used. They could be used to make capital improvements, but they could also be used for operational expenses, such as paying wages or even paying dividends to shareholders. And it is also undisputed that the amount of grants was not tied to the amount of capital improvements the company would make. Indeed, while BrokerTech intend, indicated that its program applications that it would make $72 million of capital investments in the form of improvements to office space and the acquisition of technology and furniture, the total amount of the incentive program grants were based on a percentage of income tax withholdings generated by the employees and totaled approximately $170 million. In light of these facts, BrokerTech cannot show that New Jersey intended the incentive program payments to become a part of the permit structure, a part of working capital. So that is the end of the case of Commissioner of Internal Revenue versus BrokerTech. In this case, BrokerTech was looking for a new home. And they said, and New Jersey said, how about we help you exploit your employees? How about we take 80% of the money that they're going to, going to be charged from income tax? And we don't use it to improve our state, but we instead use it to improve your bottom line. How about that? And Broker Tech was like, yes, please. But then they realized that they were living in New Jersey and they were sad. And so they didn't want to pay taxes on the amount that they used to improve their physical facilities. But the way the program was structured was it was just, here is a big pile of money, do with it what you want. And because it was just a big pile of money, the fact that you used it for capital improvements is kind of neither here nor there. You could have used it for any purpose. So it doesn't make it a capital, it make it capital income. It's just general income. So you do have to pay federal tax on this. So broker tech has to pay federal income tax on the $50 million worth of stuff it tried to avoid taxes on. And for the moment, that is the end of the coverage of this case. Thank you so much for being part of the Uncivil Law family. If you liked this latest video, please give it a like below and hit the join button. For 99 cents a month, you too can give a recurring membership that helps this channel grow and helps YouTube to recommend this channel to others. We really appreciate your continued financial support and all your love. And until later, my friends, cheers and goodbye.